Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part six and the finale of my uh, classic diorama for the 1958 film, The Fly, uh, using the figure from uh, Monarch models and a lot of scratch building and, uh, and also a figure from Escape Hatch Hobbies, which I will put in the description and show you a little bit later. Uh, so obviously I complete the, um, the build in this video, Lots, lot more work a lot more getting everything together and all the lights and all the wiring and everything else, but it turned out fantastically. So let's go ahead and take a look. Right, so I'm working on the two computer consoles on the left and right side of my machinery. Uh, these aren't going to have any lights or anything in it, but they are going to have some effects. Um, not effects. They're going to have different detail, like the little control, little computer wheels, that kind of thing. Uh, on the left one here, the control panel that came with the kit is going to go down here at the bottom of it. And on the right side... Uh, this part is obscured by the uh, the neon tube cabinet that I just completed. So what I did was I first of all put styrene on the top and glued it down and cleaned up the edges. Then I did the sides and I just have some extra bit of stripping on there to give it a little bit of detail. And I only did the left side and the right side because those are the two that you're going to see. On the inner part, I just put an overlapping piece like this on it. That overlaps the two the parts in between. These are not together on the um, on the diagram. They're separated by the other machinery. But I wanted to have something in place to overlap it. And once I get them painted, I'll paint these aluminum to give it some extra metallic detail on it. So what I'm doing now is um, I made the little parts for the 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 typical reel-to-reel -reel computer elements back in the 60s. Uh, so what I did was I was looking around for some ideas and I had this part here, several of them. This is actually a support piece for a 3D printed part for the 2001 Space Station 5. And I had printed several and some didn't print out right and they were shorter. So all I did really was I took a Dremel and I cut off a thinner slice because it had the right kind of look in the middle. And then I just sanded the edges to make them look smoother and I just took a little piece of styrene and put it like it would be the little part that spins it uh, and so those are done and I painted them with uh, steel they look really cool I think they look realistic this part here you might recognize is from the Bandai X-Wing <laughs> it's the back of it the smaller one and uh, I had several kits so that's what I'm kit bashing from these pieces as well are from the Y-Wing. And, um, and what I'm doing is I framed off this area where the computer part is going to be. And it's going to have a clear part over top of it. I have a piece right here. So this is going to go over top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this styrene that's angled and I'm going to put a, a border around it, the whole thing. But in order to do that, I have to paint everything underneath it because once I put on the clear plastic, the border is going to glue it into place. And I don't want it to be, I won't be able to get underneath it, obviously. So, what I'm doing now, and I went ahead and painted this with a blue gray on both sides. And um, I'm going to get these parts all finished up, and I'm working on these ones as well. So, these ones are going to go inside of this section here either side and I'm going to build up some other little bit of machinery in there nothing nothing outrageous just something to look like this some mechanical parts in there for these uh, for these computer controls uh, and then the rest of it isn't going to have anything most of this is going to be obscured by the the uh, control panel 
and most of this as well was obscured behind the, the neon cabinet. So I mainly just was concerned about making these parts here. And once I get that all done, I can mask off the clear and then I can paint the rest of this. And then that'll get these completed. Uh, so let me go ahead and work on this machinery here. I have, don't have this glued down just yet, but I'm going to be uh, working on that here, getting it done, and then I can move on to doing the rest of it. All right. <laughs> All right, so I got the computer wheel things in the mechanisms inside. You can see it behind this. Uh, and I put, I put uh, Tamiya tape over top of the clear piece, piece and glued it down. And what I ended up using was, uh, let me grab it here. This matte adhesive, I've used this before. Um, it's nice because what you can do is you put it down, let it dry, and it stays tacky. So I did it along the edge, and then I did it on the, uh, the outer edge of the clear, and then pressed it down. So it holds it in place, and it doesn't have to be too sturdy because then I glued this, this wide stripping along it and finished the edges of it. All right, so then I cleaned it up and sanded it up. So these are ready to go, ready to be painted, and that's why I put the tape down. So I can go ahead and paint it and everything underneath is already done. And then the clear will stay protected and then I'll just peel the tape off and, um, and reveal the clear underneath, which is already painted under here. And as you saw in the stills and I'll show later, I took a piece of my very thin black self-adhesive stripping and I tacked it on or just stuck it onto one of the wheels, took it down underneath the mechanism from the, the X-wing and back up to the other side, it looks like a piece of, of the tape reel is coming down. It looks pretty cool. And then the uh, part down below, I painted flat black and then used some, some dry brushing of some, some chrome over it to make the, the detail stand out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a coating of neutral gray on both of these, let that fully dry. And then I'm gonna mask off and paint these, this framework and these things right here with, uh, with aluminum. And then that'll finish up these. Not a lot of work to do on these. Uh, they're mostly just going with and adding to the detail for the rest of the machinery in the back. So, okay. And here are the completed lights for the center lower section. I decided to use a color changing there in the third section of four. And then the, the right ones there, I have uh, uh, alternating fast blinking, flashing, and slow flashing red ones. So they've turned out really cool. Looks really nice. And uh, so that section is all complete and ready to go for the back wall. All right, so I've completed the control box, and this is the only part from the kit that I'm using on my diorama. It is fairly accurate to what I've seen. Now I did modify it, so I didn't want it to be the damaged part, so I put this ridged styrene on both sides because this side had some big gouges out where the ax was dug into it. The top also had a, had a, knot, had a gouge in it that I filled in with putty. And then um, they had the spider web, which I removed on the front here. And I filled in these and I filled in the hole that was in the front where the spider went. So that it looks like a, an undamaged control panel. I think it turned out really nice. 
I used uh, googly eyes on the, um, the lenses. And I followed an idea that I saw from Lou Dalmeso, Aztec Dummy, where he suggested that you could leave the top removable to access the battery. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I drilled a hole down through my base and this is where this is gonna go. And it'll go up against the back wall where the computer consoles are. And then I have just one magnet on the top. I'm trying to do this with my hand. So one magnet right there and one magnet here so that it holds it in place so it isn't gonna come loose. But this will be accessible. So this is plenty of room to hold my different batteries. I'm gonna have a nine volt and I believe two different double A's. Um, so that this will be permanently glued down to the base and the wiring will go down through that hole into the bottom to get to all the lights, these lights, the back wall lights and the transporter lights. And then I'll be able to just access it that way. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet about switches as far as how to do that. I usually use remote control, but I'm gonna have at least two different power sources, if not three. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna go about that. I'll get that figured out once I start getting the wiring going on. It may simply be a thing of taking this off, <clears throat> having the switches accessible inside here, just clicking them on, putting the lid back on. That'll be the easiest thing, rather than worrying about uh, remote control that sort of thing because I'd probably have to have three different remote control sensors and that gets a little pricey so I don't really want to do that so all right All right, so I'm beginning to uh, glue, glue together the back wall components. So you can see the little test here I have going with the lights going, pretty cool. So I drilled holes in the sides of the wood in the back and glued in some brass tubing to securely attach all of the parts. You can see all the lights there on the back. I will gather that wiring together and uh, trim it down and have it secured before I uh, finish doing that. But looking really awesome all right so I'm getting prepared and starting to glue the different parts down onto the base and I tilted it back in order to uh, to get some of the wiring together and drill a hole through for the control panel and the transporter broke off of its five minute epoxy and fell down now fortunately nothing got broken everything is fine there's no damage to it uh, but it did give me a good opportunity to go back and reinforce it better, which I should have done in the first place. So I used my little powered drill. I have a cutting blade on there right now, but I used it with a drill bit and I drilled holes in the four corners or the four little areas here. And then I cut some brass tube and I five minute epoxied it down into those holes. So these are ready to go. So what I'll do then is I will lay this back down onto the base, mark off some whole areas, drill down into the, the wood and the styrene on top, and then to have a solid, more solid connection. Uh, but it actually works in my favor right now because now that this is not on the base any longer, I have a lot more room to work on the back of it. Sorry about that. To work on the, the back wall, which I'm gluing down, and the control panel. So that'll make it easier to do that. And then I can better secure this on this time so it doesn't break loose and uh, give me a problem. That would have been a disaster if this happened when I was transporting it down to Wonderfest. So I really should have secured it a little better in the first place. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty hefty, it's got a good weight to it. And uh, it's definitely top heavy whenever I tilt the thing over, which I'm gonna have to do to work on the wiring underneath and get it all fished through to the control panel. So this will make it a lot stronger so it's not gonna break off and give me a problem. All right. And there we go, we got the transporter. It's not glued back on, but I, it's on with the pins. I drilled some holes in 
and it fits down into the into the base again so it'll be a lot sturdier once i glue it back down and i'll still put glue around the edges of it and um and certainly on the pins on the the uh, brass tubes going down to the holes so it'll give it a lot more sturdiness for the base and staying on i don't want to leave it remo removable because it has wiring in it of course which has to go down into it and then these are going to be wired in or stuck in through the control panel so i can't really leave it separate it would be harder to transport separate anyway but um but i fixed that issue and no damage to it thankfully so uh it's definitely gonna be a lot better so i'm gonna move it for now while i go ahead and get the back wall glued in place and that'll have pins as well aluminum or brass it's an aluminum brass tubes uh and everything will be nice and secure uh, this cabinet here already has the brass tubes going down through it so it's nice and solid as well all right all right so i didn't do a lot of filming of this particular part here what this is is I realized that I knew that the whole machinery in the back was going to be shorter than the transporter because it's fairly tall. Uh, and I thought it would be okay, but putting it on there, once I get it on the base and take a look at it, it looks like it's, you know, it's not quite as high as I want it to be. So I went ahead and just fashioned another piece that, that spans the entire top. And it's just the same basic idea with the wood and the, and the outer panels. Now this particular one, I had to finish the both sides and the top because that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see the bottom because that's where it's going to cover up the rest of it. And I have these little places that overlap to cover up as well. And I just made it with um, these parts that match up with the lower pieces and the same with the sides. And then I just used, this is not the same uh, tile screw styrene that I used for the blinking lights it's actually slightly larger and what I'm going to do is a little different I started drilling some holes through with my little rechargeable drill which is this thing's awesome you really need to get one of these if you're doing this hobby this thing's fantastic um, but I'm just drilling some holes through some different places I'm going to take some of this red and black twisted wire and I'm just going to stick it on through and just have it coming through in different patterns just to kind of give it the idea of a, a wired up control panel jerry rigged kind of thing i want to paint this a little different too what i'm thinking of doing is painting this like more of a black these are still going to be the um the neutral gray like i did in the other ones down below to match but this one i'm going to paint it first with the black and then i'm going to let it dry and then go over it with a, a q-tip and some thinner like i did on the lower ones just to get the black into the lines and then I'm going to have something maybe like a darker gray. Uh, mist it over it. There will be no lights on this. Uh, it'll just have those, those wires stringing through it. And I think I'll just leave them red and black. I don't think I'm going to paint those. Um, these ones, I'm thinking of an idea of making like a little bit of a vent, like a louvered vent like I did on the top of the transporter, but something closed. So maybe just have like a, a square that's finished off and then put like some thinner like these ones here and just overlap them so they look like they're closed louvers for events so all right this one will go together pretty quickly and then of course these will be the aluminum on the edges and the sides just like i did below so it'll match and then i'll have to drill some holes and then use some some brass tubes as well to put that down inside that'll just make it taller and make it more of an even size with the transporter look more um it'll look better with that and not uh not look out of place all right. All right, so I drilled a bunch more holes just in random spots around this towel part in the center of the little square. Uh, also, I just used this ridged styrene inside to look like a vent to just make it easier. I wasn't gonna to spend too much time cutting out little strips and gluing them together. Uh, this is just some added detail for the top just so it looks like there's there's something else up there. Uh, so 
what I'm going to do is get this painted now, as I said, and then once it, it dries and I have the right colors, I can go ahead and string through some of this red and black twisted wire through it. I might get some other colors if I have some other ones and, and just strip it, stretch it through as well, just to make it look like a big wired up uh, jerry rigged system here. So, all right. All right, so I didn't show all the different painting, but I did a lot of masking and I did the neutral gray in these panels to match the ones below. And at first I did black in these, and of course I did flat black in this one. And then I went back over this. When, when I did this part with the gray, I let some of it overspray, so it gave it a, a look like a dirtied vent. Um, and then I masked off the rest of it and did these in the um, Vallejo aluminum. And let me get that for you. So I'm not sure how I how I feel about this. I've been trying this out. It's Vallejo metal color. It's it's very very thin. You you really wouldn't want to try to paint this on with a brush, but I airbrush it and it does give a bit of a different look. That's a little more realistic for aluminum than some of the others. It's not just all one tone, but as you can see there, it's kind of difficult to get it on evenly, and so I'm not sure how I like it. I'm going to play with it a bit, but. It'll, it'll work for this, but the um, the other versions of Vallejo aluminum is a thicker paint and it goes on smoother and it's it's not as thin and watered down as it were. Um, but I painted those, then I went back in and I just brushed on regular Vallejo aluminum around this rim, this edge, and these edges right here. So what I'm working on right now is I have this wire and I have a whole bunch of it. Let me show you here. What this is, is I took an old ethernet cable and I just stripped off the outer rubber sheathing and all these are inside. So these are really cool. If you have anything like that, you know, just, don't just go buy one, of course, but if you have an old one that you're not using and it's kind of messed up, go ahead and use that wire. It's pretty cool. This is good wire to use for different wiring too, since it's braided, but it had actually four different colors in here, the blue, the orange, the green, and the brown. So what I'm doing is untwisting some of these they're a little thick to fit through the holes that I drilled, so I'm untangling it and having it look like it's wiring through in different places. Uh, I might use some of this red and black that I just have on a spool, which I've actually used as wiring. I bought it as wire to use for different wiring. So, okay. So I'm going to put these through. I'm going to get some five minute epoxy then and just put a little dab where they all connect inside. And then I'll make it look like it's attached in. I might even paint some aluminum over that when it's done. But I think that's going to look pretty cool, and it's going to add a little bit of color to the otherwise mostly grays and metallics and black of this back wall. So that'll be kind of cool as well. And then this will finish up the top part. I still have to drill out some posts, some holes for some brass tubing, and then I can get that glued onto the rest of the, uh, the back wall. This will be on the top. All right. All right, so a little more work <clears throat> in completing up this back wall. So I did get the top section attached and fully painted and all of the little wires sealed in and, um, and then glued, of course, onto the top here. So I wanted to come up with something on the back to cover all of this up uh, and, and keep it hidden, make it look more finished. 
The first thing I did was I glued in this piece of wood and I bent down the, um, the fiber optics carefully, not to damage them. And they're being held down by this. So they're, they're nice and flush on the back. Um, mainly because the, um, I designed this kit to be the right dimensions to fit inside of my glass cabinets. Let me show you here. So there's one of my cabinets over there, two of them. So inside of those, each of those shelves accommodates something that can be 13 inches by 13 inches square, which this is. Uh, what I didn't take into account is something to cover this. Initially, I thought just something flush with the back, um, but then I had these extra things here and I still have to trim down these wires and channel them down through this hole at the bottom to go down through the base. Um, so what I can do is when I put it in the cabinet for display here, I would just leave the back off. Um, and then that way, when I take it out to a convention like the Wonderfest, I can put the back on to, to cover this. And what I did was I glued in some magnets right there. And then as I showed in the previous stills, I created a, um, a back to go on it. Let me go ahead and show you that here. Okay, so a simple structure. I started just with the, full, the framework of these basswood strips. And I put them onto the back, glued them together in the corners, so it would be the right size for the back of the um, of the the machinery. Uh, and I actually made it down lower than the bottom of the machinery because it goes down below the the floor of the diorama as well. Uh, then before I glued this back on, which is just the same. Um, pressed wood that I've been using from the, the poster boards, poster frames from Hobby Lobby. I glued in the magnets and positioned them with the right polarity so they're ready to go for that. Um, and then I, then I glued on this wood and I initially painted it with a satin black out of a can from Krylon and then I went back over it with um, aluminum from Vallejo. And I also added, before that, I added on some more of this little stripping just to give it some detail like it is on the rest of it. So it matches in. But I think it turned out really nice. And I like the metallic look as opposed to, like, I thought it looked string black, but the metal looks better for it. And that'll be a nice covering. You're really not going to see it. It's in the back behind it, but, you know, it'll be visible. So, all right. So we put that on to the uh, machinery wall, and I'll show you how that's going to look on the diorama. All right, and so here's the wall just sitting on the back of it. It's not attached permanently yet, but you can see how that's going to look. It's pretty cool. So I decided to go with the silver rather than black. I think it kind of fits in with the or aluminum. kind of fits in with the other metallic walls going around it. But the back will be removable, of course, with the magnets. And then um, this part, the front, will be glued down onto the base once I'm done. And then I'll have the control panel right here. And that'll have all the wiring going down for all the lights. And then this will come off for the batteries. All right. So now that I've got this back completed, I'm ready to go ahead and get this glued down onto the base. Get the wiring all fished down into the bottom and bring it up into this control box. I also have to consider drilling out some holes in the front of this <clears throat> for the big, big wire bundles coming down from the transporter that go into this box. Initially, I was thinking of putting them on the side, but I want to kind of put the spider web down in here with a tragic man fly in the spider, since that's one of the few corners that I have that you'll be able to see it. There's really not a lot of room over here. I thought about that, but I'm actually thinking of another hole drilled here for a cable to come up and come across here and go into a hole maybe right about here as well, because there are a bunch of cables strung around this, this thing as well. And just sort of hide this little gap here but um, slowly coming together uh, just about ready to get all these parts put together and ready to go and then I can finish up working on my figures and very close to wrapping up this build <laughs> Thank you.
All right, so now that I have the back glued on and in place and on there solid, I'm ready to go ahead and attach on the control panel. I haven't attached the transporter yet, but I'm doing some planning ahead because I have these, these cable bundles that are attached inside of the top of the transporter that are going to come down. They're going to be attached on the sides here, but kind of loosely fitting, and they're going to come down and they're going to go into the front of this. So as I showed in the previous stills, I drilled some holes through the bottom of the control panel, and I used some styrene tube, put a little bit of a, a uh, lip around the edge of it, and then I painted them aluminum, and I glued them inside. So this is how these are all going to fit uh, inside of the um, control panel, giving you the idea that that's giving you the different power to the control panel itself. Uh, I also put a hole over here on this little corner, and I'm going to bring a cable out of this and up, and it's going to go straight across, and I'm going to drill a hole somewhere over in this area, and it's going to come across, and it's going to go inside, giving you an idea, kind of linking all of this wiring to the, the mechanisms and the computers in the back, because in the film there are several just, you know, uh, crudely bundled wires going across different places. Uh, there could potentially be one across the bottom part here too, but I don't really want to block those controls. Uh, but I want at least one. I definitely want the idea that this was all put together by uh, Delambre, the scientist. He had people machine certain things for him, but he himself wired all this together, and it's it's just you know crudely done in many ways. Uh, actually, in the film, or not the film, in the book, the transporter is a repurposed telephone box, which I always find kind of interesting. Uh, and then he just added the extra components, giving you again the idea that that he uh, he's a genius, but he takes a lot of these crude machinery and puts it together for the purposes of his transporter. Uh, so I had to go ahead and get these holes and everything ready to go because until I attach down the transporter, which is the last thing I'm going to do on the base, other than the figures, uh, I'm not really going to have these cables put in. But I'll be able to just glue them in at the, at the end once I get all this done. But I do want this to be glued down. And then also when I do that, I can run the cable from here up through uh, the rest of it. So I, I made a cable using the same uh, different color wires that I got from the Ethernet cable. In this case, I just used the, um, the blue, the orange, and the green. And then I took some of my single black and red, as you can see here, and I wrapped it around it. First, I, I used some red shrink tube and I sh uh, shrunk it along the end to have it put everything together. And then I slowly took it and wrapped it and twisted it to keep, keep a nice twist. And I took it all the way down to the end and then I, I sealed it on the end and then Every so often I put a little shrink tube along it and I, I shrunk it along it to make it a nice tight cable. It's longer than I need it to be, um, but that's fine because I can cut it down. And of course what it'll do is go in here, it'll bend, come up along here, go along this edge, and then go into a hole probably right about this area. Giving it the idea that it's also connecting into the control panel. All right, uh, and of course, like I said, I won't put this on until I get this glued into place, uh, but it's ready to go. The box is ready to go, and so what I can do is remove the transporter again, get this glued in place, and then I can glue the cable, and I still have to drill a hole in there because I hadn't done that ahead of time, so I'll have to be careful with that and not get a lot of the, the dust in other places. So, All right, we're getting very close to completing the actual base and all the machinery in it and I'm still going to do a few extra things down in here which I'll still be able to access once I remove the transporter and I'm thinking of putting a spider web down in the corner of where this control panel meets the wall as well so until I do those things I'm not ready to finish the final assembly with the transporter but definitely coming very close to completing this looking fantastic <laughs>
And there is my completed creepy spider web with the way too big spider. And this was the one from the kit. So it's about the size of his hand, which if a spider was as big as my hand, that thing would be massive. So it's definitely not on scale. Same with the fly, little tragic man fly. I didn't get any real detail on him, just the bare, bare hint of it. The idea he has a white head and a white arm. He doesn't have any wings, which I noticed. Very odd. So we'll see if I want to worry about that, but probably not. I'd have to fashion something very thin and clear, but it would probably look kind of fakey. But I think it looks cool. And I took some cotton and I, I put some some of my um, Plastruck Bondine, brushed it on and then just rubbed the cotton against it and some of it pulled off and went on to the, the plastic. And so it looks like it's a bit fuzzy. Give it a little bit more realism. I mean, certainly it's, it's out of scale. Real spider web wouldn't be that big, that thick. But it would be hard to make it too much thinner without and have it be sturdy at all. So they're glued on there. And that's ready to go in the corner of my um, of my diorama. I just have one more part to finish up, and then uh, I'll put this on there and then show you uh, at this point the completed diorama without the transporter attached on it or the lights or anything. So okay. <laughs> All right, and there's the spider web in place in the in their corner of the control panel. Uh, there's this additional piece of machinery I built that I showed in the previous stills. You'll recognize this the main part from the Death Star trench that I uh, did some cutting on and accommodated. The piece in the middle is from the Bandai Y wing, both Bandai here, uh, and I created some little dowels on it to look like some more controls. Uh, I used some aluminum tubing in the bottom and these little bits on the sides and the top where these wires go through. And just used uh, some, some gun metal and some other metallics to make it look like a machinery, but just wanted to add a little more detail. So the whole back is all done and completed and attached and glued in place. There's my multicolored cable going into a hole in the top, coming down and into the bottom side. I've started wiring the, the lights for the back and they're coming up through this. It's just positioned right now. Uh, and then, um, so that's all completed. I'm just ready to, uh, the last thing I'll do would be to put on the transporter. Uh, but before that, I still need to finish up uh, the figures and start getting them, them attached onto the, um, the diorama. But uh, definitely getting ready to wrap this up. All right, so previously on another part of my build video, I had shown a figure that I had printed off that was originally designed for a set from Psycho, the movie Psycho. And um, and I was initially gonna use that as his screaming wife. Uh, somebody did suggest on one of the Facebook groups a um, this figure here, which is from a company called Escape Hatch. And I will put a link in the description. And they created this 3D printed figure uh, they don't offer the file but they do sell the figure in parts so i already have her glued together so it came with her bottom the dress of course the top the two arms her head and her two legs it also includes uh the little cloth shroud that that he was wearing on his head let me show you that real quick which i may use it's kind of cool so it's just crumpled and you just put it down on the floor. So the idea is that he removed it and it's lying on the floor. So we'll see, I might do that as a detail. But very nice figure. It looks, it looks a lot more realistically like the wife from the film. And she has like uh, red hair. Her dress is a, a pastel yellow with some white trim and that sort of thing. So very straightforward. I think her shoes are white. I'll have to look at some film shots. Nice screaming pose, 
nice detail on her face and the hair very cool so I might have to do a little bit more cleanup I tried to fill in mostly the seams on the arms uh, the rest of it is pretty natural like where the, the waist meets there's no real seam to worry about there the legs are underneath I'm not worrying about those holes in the bottom you're not gonna see it don't look up her dress it's not very gentlemanly like so one thing I'm modifying right now first of all I drilled well there were some holes some vent holes in the bottom so I just opened them up a little bit and I put in some brass tube because I don't want her to be glued down permanently I want her to be removable and I'll drill holes down into the base that so she'll go down inside of it um, but the problem is with just the two posts she's rather flimsy in addition they had a heel on both of the shoes Let me show you the heels they cut off very thin and I was just afraid those were gonna break and plus in addition I want more stability so I cut them off I'm gonna use this brass solid rod which is the same thickness as the heels and I'm drilling some holes up into those using a pin vise and my little portable drill which this thing is awesome I really love it it's really perfect uh, and then I'm gonna glue those in with five minute epoxy and build it up around the top where the heel part would have been thicker to make it look more like her heel but it'll come down further and go down into another hole in the base giving me four different connections for her to go into the base and I'll do the same thing with the fly figure he'll have posts in his shoes that he'll be able to connect onto it as well so they'll have a nice solid connection and I can remove them if I want to transport it when I go to Wonderfest and not worry about them breaking loose or being damaged in any way but very cool figure so once I get these all done and glued, I'm going to go ahead and get her painted. And I will show that progress. And then I'll just have to uh, do a little bit more detailing on the fly, a little bit of weathering. And then I'll be able to have both of those ready to go on to my diorama. All right. <music> begun painting uh, the Helene wife figure that's her name Helene and so I'm just doing some pre-shading with some of the, the darker colors first ultimately her dress is a very pale yellow with white accents on that that uh, sash down the middle and her collar and the belt maybe some metal on the belt buckle but other than that it's all white her shoes are white and then her, her skin is flesh, obviously. And her hair is, is, she's a redhead. So what I'm starting with are the more obvious colors. I started with a medium yellow to highlight the various parts of the dress and the wrinkles. I started with flesh tone on her hands and her face and her legs. Uh, and, um, and just red on her, her hair. And I'm gonna go back and layer on several other colors. Obviously on her hair, I'm gonna do some orange uh, some some maybe white or yellow highlighted the idea that I'm going for is I'm going to do some blending over top so rather than having to you know start with the base color I start with the darker color in the deeper parts like the very obvious wrinkles in her dress and then I'll just get a very light yellow and go over it and mist over the rest of the dress in order to keep those dark highlights within it uh, and then maybe even the tops of the wrinkles, I might even use some pastels and brush on some white to, to make it look a little more worn. Uh, her hair, same way. I want to start with the, the darker, the red, put on some, some orange in spots, and then just keep going further out to get the more of the highlights in the end. Because her hair isn't red-red, it's going to be more of an orangish color kind of a thing. And then uh, obviously just either mask off or hand paint the white parts, which is just her shoes. Like I said, that, that big sash down the middle with the buttons and up in the front and her collar and then the belt. And then certainly work on her flesh tones and in her face, obviously. So, all right. So not a, not a lot of variation in the actual colors of the parts of the, of the figure, but some different shading 
and making it look more realistic. So, okay. And here are the two stars of the diorama. The fly, of course, who I had finished quite a while ago. Just doing a little bit of touching up on him. Uh, but I have them both fashioned with their connectors. He just has some aluminum tubes and two, uh, two places that he connects into the base. And I have larger aluminum tubes inside that are glued into the, the base so that he just slides down into the tubes. It's easier than trying to slide him down into just the open holes in the base. And then the idea is that when the transporter's here, his hand is, is kind of grabbing onto one of the cooling racks on the right side there. So he's he's kind of leaning forward a bit and, and touching that rack. Um, now, Helene was a lot more difficult, of course, as I said. So I have her two heels, which I put a little piece of aluminum tube on the end to look like the little heel and which goes into the little hole to kind of mask the hole a bit. Uh, the shoe totally covers up the hole here in the front or the hole under the shoe, but the back part, I really couldn't have anything in there because it's just a thin rod. Uh, so let me get her in there. She's a little trickier to put in. I need both hands, so let me put her in and I'll show you how she's gonna look. All right, there we go. So, you can't see too much of it. The heel holes, if you look closely enough, you can see that there's a hole there, but but it's not bad. The rest of the shoe covers the other hole, and certainly the fly, you can't see any of the holes. And I did deliberately have him, kind of his heels going off the edge of the diorama a bit, which I think is kind of a cool thing. I like that sometimes, where they're kind of extending out from the diorama. But there they are in their positions. And they are removable, as I said, so they won't be permanently glued down. So the last thing I have to do, and I've already begun to gather the wiring. You can see over here, I have the wires from the back here ready to go. I have to get them trimmed down and put into their battery holders that go down inside here. Uh, I still have to uh, glue on and attach the transporter. And I have one set of wires coming off of that that will also come up into this and the same thing. And then once I'm done with that, that will wrap up this video, wrap up this build actually. So let me go ahead and get that in place and then we'll go ahead and show the final reveal. All right, so finishing up the wiring, all the wires I have pulled out and I have them marked carefully. They're all three volts except for the blinking ones, which are nine volts. So I have to be very careful not to put that onto the three volt. It'll burn them out. That would ruin some really nice, lights that would be very hard to replace. So the first thing I did was I went ahead and got the first battery pack down in there and I have the lights for the transporter. So I'm gonna turn these on one at a time and show how they look. Very, very sweet. Has a breathing effect. And up in the top, let's see if I can show it. But I have, yeah, there we go. Little blinking white lights. So those two are wired into the same battery pack and I have the flying on here because I was positioning him to be holding onto the rack so I'll leave him there for now I took Helene off so I'd have some room to get in here all right so that's the first one I'm gonna have three battery packs all together two double A's one for these two one for the middle blinking lights and the neon lights and then a nine volt for the blinking controls in the back all right so now that this is done let me go ahead and do the next one which I'm going to do the nine volt next and I'll leave this one running as well. All right, so I have the snap put onto the nine volt. Now, uh, I do have a switch for the other ones. Uh, this one, I don't, I don't care. It's just gonna be easy enough to snap it on. It's the only one that has a snap, so it's not a big deal. Um, I could have used, as I said, some uh, remote control sensors, but I'd have to have three. I'm gonna have three battery packs all together and it, it just doesn't make much sense. It's just as easy for me to open up the lid of the control panel, snap this onto the battery, turn the other two on, and it's ready to go. So let me go ahead and put this one on. All 
All right, and there's my blinking controls and my breathing transporter, very cool. All right, let me get the last two wired together and into the last double A. And that'll finish up the lighting effects. All right, so I have the last one wired up. Not tucked in there yet, but let me go ahead and turn that on. There's the blinking, various randomly blinking light controls in the back and the blinking neons looking really sweet with all the other effects quite a lot of blinking and breathing and other such things all right let me get that tucked in and i will get uh helene on it and then i'll do the final wrap up video of the completed uh, fly from monarch in my really super scratch built diorama Here is my finished fly diorama from the classic 1958 film with the Monarch fly figure and control panel. The only ones that parts I used from the kit. My 3D printed figure from Escape Hatch Hobbies of Helene and the little uh, hood or the cloth he had over his head that came with it as well. Everything else I scratch built myself nice transporter all the machinery in the back and you can see the coal breathing smds down in the bottom of the transporter as if it's idling and up on top you have the uh this blinking white fiber optics in the back there you can see the blinking squares for the computers and below that the various colored random blinking lights for the controls underneath. And then over here, of course, the flashing blue and yellow neon controls as well. And then the computer consoles, real to real tapes, all of my wire bundles, various wires to power this thing, my additional machinery there in the back and then of course the way down in there the fly the tragic man fly being attacked by the spider screaming help me but you can't hear him over all this machinery apparently he was in this in the lab the whole time all right very happy with this project had a lot of fun creating all the scratch built laboratory and the lights and i think it turned out fantastically so let me just do one more thing. I have a little sound board and we turn on the sound here. All right, very, very cool. Really happy with this. Quite a bit of work. Several months I'm working on it, but I'm really happy with how it all turned out. And my fly, of course, with the static grass for his bristly head and hand. And the pretty cool looking screaming figure of Helene. Recreating the scene where he goes through the last time and pulls off the 
cloth covering and she sees him for the first time as the fly and just starts screaming. All right. All right, so very happy with this project, really happy with how it all turned out. Uh, altogether, I put in about four months on this. It started in late January and finishing now in late May. Uh, Wonderfest is coming up in a week and a half, so uh, it's all ready to go. And uh, really happy and pleased with it, and we'll be excited to take it down there. So if you're going to be going to Wonderfest, uh, certainly stop by and take a look. And, uh, and I'll be glad to talk about my model and, and show it off to you. Uh, but very happy with, um, with how everything turned out. And, uh, and it's been a really, really enjoyable build. So, all right. Thank you to all my new subscribers. And uh, my next video will pretty much be showing things from Wonderfest and uh, talking about uh, having fun there and getting together with my friends, Augie Gonzalez, Lou Dalmeso, uh, Phil Siegel, uh, Wayne from England. And I'm sorry, Wayne, I don't remember your last name. I apologize. Um, and any, anyone else that's going to be there, we'll get together and, and hang out with. Uh, so thanks a lot. And I will see you in the next video.